thank you so much. And it's really an honor to be here and being inspired by so many colleagues doing highly relevant research. I would like to talk about a research that is ongoing combining health and trade. And I do this together with colleagues from the Global Development Policy Center. We are looking at policies that governments have instituted now to mitigate the effects of COVID-19 in terms of mitigating uh, economic impact, social impact, health impact. However, these policies might actually be in conflict with trade and investment rules. These trade and investment rules have been heavily criticized over many, many years for not being actually protecting societies, contributing to a, a fair uh, economic distribution of resources globally and health system resilience. So now this pandemic really gives us the opportunity to revise some of these trade and investment rules, given that some of the countries actually have instituted policies that might conflict with them. So there is a case to bring forward to say, now is the time to revise some of these policies. And to be much more, let's say, targeted with our proposal of how to revise trade and investment policies, you want to look closely at which policies actually contradict or are inflicting uh, compromising trade and investment rules, and then coming up with suggestions that are very tailored to overcome uh, and, and revise and improve these uh, policies. So what are, what are we doing in terms of specific objectives? We would like to describe the landscape of those policies that have been enacted by uh, governments that conflict or um, conflict this, um, COVID uh, with trade and investment rules. We would like to identify exactly how they um, uh, are compromising or in conflict with trade and investment rules, and then exploring the trade-off that governments have to go through in terms of their national interests, the global welfare, private and public investment, and also equity and efficiency arguments, and then coming up with tailored recommendations how to improve them. What, uh, how do we go about such a research that is at such high level? Uh, first of all, we chose five countries as cases, if you want, that have instituted very emblematic policies that you are familiar with. For instance, the investment in certain uh, production of vaccines that actually, to a certain extent, uh, infringe some of the trade and, and investment rules. So we have chosen the United States, France and Germany as high income countries and South Africa and India. Uh, as our examples, all have uh, pharmaceutical industries and are very strong in terms of protecting this, this, uh, this industry or this sector. We, we are looking closely at what type of policies they have enacted and what type of interventions have they used. And then we will uh, characterize these and assess them in terms of their compliance. What are the preliminary results so far from our investigation? What you can see here in the first table is that the United States have enacted the highest number of state acts, um, which is maybe not surprising given the size of the country and the size of its economy. But interestingly, when you look at India here, it has the highest number of different types of interventions used. Um, the tools that the Indian government is using in, uh, in other ways to protect its own industry is very varied. It might give us a glimpse of how we could improve trade and investment rules that would better balance uh, uh, global, global economic resources. So in conclusion, a wide range of different policies is, are used. Uh, lower income countries actually play an important role in improvement trade and investment policies, looking very closely at what they enact. And the pharmaceutical sector is really a cosmos, a very interesting set of uh, um, uh, providers, a very interesting field of research to investigate these policies much more closer. Thank you very much.